C0 and C1. So if a node have uh, five instances of class 0 and five instances of class 1, uh, and the another node is which is having the nine instances of class 0 and one instance of class uh, 1. So I can say this is more purer node as compared to this because here five instances are saying that the class is zero and five instances are saying that the class is one so it's equal right we cannot give a preference like here i can say the majority of them cannot say wrong thing so major i will go with the majority voting and as the majority of the instances are saying that the class is zero <coughs> the label for this node will be class zero if it's a leaf node okay so uh, this is high degree of impurity and this is low degree of impurity so and we are interested in something called as a uh, homogeneous node and not the heterogeneous node heterogeneous node in a sense what it is having uh, the instances of different classes and more or less equal instances but here homogeneous so majority of them are saying the class is an, an, uh, uh, zero so this is a homogeneous node and we are interested in the homogeneous node okay so now how to find the, how to measure the impurity is here because this is equal i can say it's a more impure and this is nine and one so majority of the instances belonging to one class uh, so this is a purer node but uh, so we should have some formula for calculating the impurity okay so there are three different measures uh, there are many actually but uh, here we have listed three different measures one is the Gini index one is the entropy and the other is the misclassification error so these are the formulas for finding the impurity <coughs> so if you have a look at the Gini index so uh, this formula what is um, uh, uh, this PIT is a frequency of, so you have different classes, right? You have different classes. Here it's only two classes, but you can have more than two classes also. So here the, uh, uh, <coughs> I represents each class and there are total C classes. That's why uh, this I goes from zero to C minus zero. So this we are going to calculate one minus this, this value we are going to calculate for each class. And what is that value? Uh, PIT. So what is PIT? Is the frequency of class I at a node T. We are going to find the impurity at a particular node, right? So how many instances are belonging to class, say uh, class zero, and how many instances are belonging to class one? So this we are going to just put it uh, in this formula over here. PIT is the frequency of class I at the node. And what is C? C is the total number of classes present in the given data set. Okay, this is a formula for entropy. <laughs> Sorry. This is a formula for misclassification error. Today, what we will have a look at only the Gini index. Okay, so you have to just apply this formula to the given data set. And how we are going to do? So, we are interested in finding the best split and that best split we are going to do using the guinea index okay currently we are going to have a look at the guinea index so how we will do that compute the impurity measure so these measure tells you what the impurity measure okay okay so um, compute the impurity measure p before splitting the node and then compute the impurity measure say m after splitting the node and uh, so how to get the impurity measure uh, is using the formula that we had seen uh, if the before splitting the node simply we have to apply the simple formula okay and if we are splitting the node we are not interested so uh, if, if you go to the next slide now so so this is a uh, this is a node before splitting okay and this is this will be the tree after splitting so tree is built and the uh, this node you have two more child nodes so i have to choose whether this 
is best or this is best maybe at this particular uh, position i have two or more attributes which can be chosen for splitting so if i choose a what is the impurity measure and if at this particular node if i choose b for splitting the data what is the impurity measure so if i choose a the, my impurity measure is m1 if i choose b the impurity measure is m2 and depending upon what the value of m1 or m2 is i will choose whether i have to go for this or this and i am going to use the greedy approach so i am going to choose the one which gives me the less impurity okay how that we will see so you need to compute the impurity measure before splitting of the node then compute the impurity measure after splitting the node so how to calculate that compute impurity measure of each child node so you know how to calculate the impurity measure of this node okay but if i split it using this particular attribute i will get maybe i am getting uh, it is that this particular attribute is having only two different distinct values that's why i have two different branches and there will be some instances from here which will be coming here and some instances from here which will be coming here so all the instances will be going to this or this okay there will be none of the uh, instance who will be staying over here they have to parse the tree and come over here so i have to calculate again the impurity measure of this node 1 and i have to calculate the impurity measure of the node 2 so the impurity measure of the node 1 is m11 how is that we will see and the impurity measure of this node 2 is m12 but i am not simply interested in m11 and m12 but i need the weighted uh measure that is m1 how to get that is so compute impurity measure of each child node that is m11 and m12 and m is the weighted impurity of the child node that is m1 over here that is m1 okay so that is what we have to find and choose the attribute test condition that produces the highest gain and we have to choose which will give me the highest gain and how i am going to get the gain is because what uh, i am calculating p and m are impurity measure no so the my aim is at the root node i will have some higher impurity and i have to go on building the tree so that my impurity uh, measure go on reducing so if, as the impurity decreases i am gaining more so that is gain is what p minus m so whichever attribute gives me the best gain that i have to choose the best gain or i can say the lowest impurity measure after splitting lowest impurity means what the best gain okay that so we will simply do this just to understand this what this is saying is so at the root node you have instances belonging to two classes uh, i am audible right yes ma'am yes um so um at the root node i have instances belonging few of them are belonging to class 0 and few of them are belonging to class 1 say n00 says that the number of instances belonging to node 0 and class 0 number of instances belonging to node 0 and class 1 this is what will this will help me to find out what is p okay in this earlier this this p these uh values will help me to find out what is p and if i choose attribute a for splitting this is some tree i will get so the root node is divided into node n1 and node n2 and so uh, so the instances over here few of them will come here few of them will come here so again the uh, you have two class classes over here c0 and c1 so n10 represents the number of instances at the node 1 or at node n1 the uh, uh, instances belonging to class 0 and at node n1 how many are belonging to class 1 and so on okay so is this table clear so if b is chosen for splitting the data maybe the node n3 and n4 are created and then here you have n30 saying the number of instances belonging to class 0 at node 3 in number of instances belonging to class 1 at node n3 and so on so this values will help me to get the uh, value for m11 that is impurity at this particular node that is n1 and m12 is nothing the impurity at node n2 
but I am interested in the weighted impurity measure of this child. Okay, and what is my gain? P minus M1. So, what the impurity is present at the parent node minus the impurity measure present at the child node. Weighted impurity measure, okay, that is M1. How to calculate this? That we will see. M1, how to calculate M1. So, P you will calculate using this formula. That also we will see with example. Okay, so the gain is what? The impurity at the parent node minus the impurity at the child node. So, after this minus this, I will get some value. And P minus M2, I will get some value. So, I have to choose which gives me the highest gain. That is, a, or the node which is having the, uh, the tree which is having lowest impurity at the child node will be preferred. Because if P minus M2, M2 is small, that is the gain will be maximum. M2 is smaller than M1. So, okay. Uh, so, <coughs> the guinea index is the same formula what they have given. So, they just have listed what the maximum value for the guinea index can be and the maximum, the minimum value can be 0. Okay, the 0 means what? The purest, there is no error in that. No impurity is there. Maybe the, you will get that when I have this class distribution and 9 and 0. So, all the instances are belonging to the same class. So that the Guinea index impurity will be 0. And impurity will be maximum when they have equal distribution. Okay, so that depends upon how many classes you have. That's why 1 minus 1 minus uh, 1 minus 1 minus C. C is what? The number of classes present in the data set. So the maximum value what can occur and the minimum value what can occur. So, uh, if the maximum value, if the, you have two classes, okay, if you have two classes, so this will become half. So, 1 minus half will be what? Half, that is 0. 0.5. So, if it's a two class problem, what can be the maximum value? 0. 0.5. You can see oh, in this diagram, the impurity is 0. 0.5 over here. Okay. So, uh, so, they, they have shown the calculations. See, even here you can see you have equal instances to both the classes. It's a two class problem. 3, 3 distribution is equal. The gaining index that you get is 0. 0.5. And when you have homogeneous node, a pure homogeneous node, so all the instances are belonging to one class. So, 6 instances belonging to class 2 and 0 instances are belonging to class 1. So, my gaining index, if you apply this formula, my gaining index will be zero and you can see how the guinea index is increasing as the distribution changes the guinea index goes on changing so here they have it's the same formula is there and they are saying for a two class problem if the uh, probability of class one suppose one class is p then the probability of another class will be what one minus p so that's what they are trying to do and they are just trying to Put it in the formula. Okay, so what they have done is 1 minus this. So they have just P and 1 minus P, they have applied over here and finally you are getting this value. 1 minus what? For each class distribution, for each class, the probability of for of each class. That's why, so one class is the probability of one class is what? P. So what? minus p square and uh, the probability of another class will be what 1 minus p square so 1 minus p square whole square v 1 minus p whole square sorry so are you getting this simply they have put this probability into this formula okay shall i move ahead Are you getting this? If you have any doubts, you can ask. Okay, some example is there. We will have a look. 
how to calculate the Gini index. Now you have a node given to you. Okay, you have a node given to you. Six instances are belonging to class two, and zero instances belong to class one. So you have to simply apply this formula. How you will get the impurity measure at this particular node? One minus for all the classes, you have to use this formula. So what is the probability of class one at this particular node? That is zero by six. And the probability of class two is what? Six by six. Correct. So if simply if I put this uh, zero and one into this formula, so one minus what is the probability of class one? That is zero. So one minus zero, and the probability of class two is what? One. That's why minus one. It's a summation, right? Minus. So the minus into plus that will become minus, and you will get this zero. So if the class distribution is like one and five, the probability of class one is one by six. The probability of class two is what five by six. So you simply put these formulas, values in this formula, and you get these values. So if the probability, if the class instances are two and four for class one and class two, for class one the probability will be two by six, <coughs> and for class four it will be sorry uh, for class two it will be four by six. Simply put it, and you get the Gini index at that particular node. <coughs> so you can calculate the Gini index of the parent node, supposingly over here. <coughs> Now, if we are splitting the node, if we are splitting the node, then how to calculate? It's just a weighted measure of the each child node. So you just have to multiply that value by the number of instances coming to that particular. node so you don't get confused between this this is a formula for split okay if you go to the parent node if you go to the parent node this we are doing for each class so i is representing the class as i have these two classes that's why here i have minus probability of c1 square minus probability of c2 square so that i is representing each For my classes, but when I go to the child node, what I am going to do? I I have a parent node, and that I am going to divide like shown in this example. Shown in this example, if this is my parent node, if I am splitting it into three child, I can also split it into two child, or I can have more than two the way I want. So that k in the uh, split is representing the number of Partitions that you are creating. Okay, so don't get confused between the formula for parent node and the uh, 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 when you are calculating the impurity of the after the splitting. That is after creating the child node. So that k is representing the number of partitions. Here two partitions are created. Here three partitions are created, and you can create more than. The number of partitions that you want. The number of partitions can be maximum to the number of distinct value that particular attribute can have. Okay, so here we was. So when a node P, okay, the parent node, okay, when a node P is split into k partitions. So you have a parent node P, and you are splitting it into k partitions. Then how do you find the Gini of the split? Because I am interested in weighted Gini index. Okay, so this Gini split is nothing but that that is this M1 over here. This M1 over here. Because how you can calculate P similar way, you can calculate M11 using the same formula. But I am interested in the weighted Gini index, so that is what they they are doing over here. They are just for each partition, they are calculating the Gini index and they are calculating the weighted overall Gini index. So weighted, how you will get the number of instances that are coming to that particular branch? That is, n i is the number of instances, the number of records at the child i, and what is n? The number of records at the parent node. This 
I is representing this. I is representing the number of branches or the number of child nodes. And we know how to find the Gini index of any node. That it can be done using this formula. Okay, are you getting this? And you simply have to multiply by this n i by n. So, if we have a look at the example, this example will explain you. So um, here they have you have a ch parent node split it into two child node. Okay, splits into two partitions at the child node. So. Um, so effect of why we are doing this because we are interested in getting the purer node. Okay, we are interested in getting the purer node. So at the parent node here, we are having seven instances belonging to class one and five instances belonging to class two. If you put that formula, you will get this Gini index. And if some attribute B is used for splitting this parent node and after splitting this is the table that you are getting so again the classes will remain same right the classes will be whatever the classes are there at the parent node same classes will be there but the number of instances will get distributed so at node n1 you are having five instances belonging to class 1 one instance belonging to class 2 and at N2, you have two instances belonging to class 1 and four instances belonging to class 2. You can see at the parent node, seven instances to class 1. So, 5 plus 2. So, this is how they got distributed between the two child nodes. And this 5 is what? 4 plus 1. This is how they got distributed between the two nodes. Sorry. So, the guinea of node 1 is what? 1 minus the probability of C1 class that is 5 by 6 this okay these are the instances which are present at the node n1 and these are the instances which are present at the node n2 so what is the probability of class C1 class at the node n1 that is 5 by 6 total instances are 6 and the probability of class 2 is what 1 by 6 this is 1 by 6. So 1 minus 5 by 6 square minus 1 by 6 square. You will get some answer. And the guinea index at the node N2 is <coughs> 1 minus 2 by 6. So 6 what? The number of instances at the node N2. 4 plus 2, 6. By chance here you have the same number of instances at both the nodes. So 2 by 6 whole square minus 4 by 6 whole square. You will get some. But we are not interested in this 2 distant value. We are interested in weighted guinea index. So in order to get the weighted guinea index, you have to multiply it by this value. So it is ni by n. ni is number of record at the child, uh, that particular node. And n is the number of records present at the parent node. So how many instances are present at the child node? 6. So that's why 6 by and the parent node is what? Total 12 instances. 6 by 12 instances at node n1 multiplied by this plus the number of instances present at the node n2 is what? Again 4 plus 2 that is 6 by and the parent node there are 12. So 12 into the guinea of the node n2 and you will get this value. So gain is what? 0.486 minus 361, which is 0.125. So you will get some gain if you use the attribute B. You will get some gain if you get some uh, use the attribute A. So if you have a choice between A and B, you have to choose the attribute which gives me the maximum grain, uh, gain. Is it okay? Have you understood this? Yes, can you, can someone respond? Anyone is having any doubt? Don't keep mum, you have to apply it to the data set that I will share here.
we are trying to build a tree okay we have seen how a tree is used for classifying the instances now we are trying to build the tree okay anyways okay so um, uh, you can go for a multi way split or you can also go for go for a two way split this we have already seen and you have to choose which is the best okay currently we, we will ignore multi way and two way split so but we will use only see um, just a minute huh? Okay, so uh, just currently ignore multi-way and two-way split. So I told you, you have two attributes given and you have to choose the best. Now you have to apply this Gini index to the data set that I'm sharing here. Okay, I have just put the formulas over here, the Gini index that we are referring. So at the parent node, uh, you can see the uh, two files, right? Can someone respond? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, this is one ARFF file. So, that is uh, attribute relation file format, you can say it. So, this is uh, one of the way where how you can represent the data set. Okay, so you can see here that uh, there are five attributes over here. Okay, there are five attributes over here. One is the outlook, temperature, humidity, windy. And uh, I, I have taken, this is a standard data set, okay, weather data set. Um, weather data set, standard data set having 14 instances. And you have five different attributes. So first attribute is the outlook and it can have a value sunny, overcast or rainy. Uh, next attribute is the temperature. We can take the values to hot, mild or cool. Next is humidity which can take high and normal values. Next is the windy attribute which can take true or false attribute uh, values. And the fifth attribute is nothing but the class of the instance that is play. So they are just trying to predict depending upon what the weather is, they are trying to predict whether it is feasible for playing or no. So the play can be yes or no. Okay, these are 14 distance, uh, different instances. <coughs> Okay, this data set is a very standard data set and uh, numeric values for these data sets are also available. Uh, but how to handle the numeric value is little different that we will see uh, later on. But uh, currently I have taken only the no nominal attribute. So it's uh, easy to understand the starting concept. Okay, so you have to apply this Guinea index to this data set and tell me what tree is built. So for making it easy, I have just tried to put what values you have to calculate. <coughs> you can calculate before this actually, you can calculate the <coughs> Gini index of the data set. Okay, how you will get the, um, Uh, see, uh, this is one instance. The first is what outlook. Second attribute is temperature. This is humidity. This is windy. And this is class. Similarly, it's a second attribute and so on. So you have total 14 instances. And to this, you have to apply this Guinea index. So for that, what you will have to do is you can find out the Gini index of the data set. Yeah, what I have not done actually. So you have to find out Gini. So Gini of split. The Gini of split is this actually. Gini if the attribute outlook is used for splitting. 
but in order to calculate this so gini of outlook i have to find out of find out gini when outlook is sunny gini when the out, when the outlook is overcast and the gini when the outlook is rainy because outlook is attribute which can take the value sunny overcast and rainy you can see the first attribute is either sunny overcast or rainy it will have none of the values different than this so for each child node so when i say gini of outlook is equal to sunny in a sense what so if outlook is used for splitting it is having three different so i will have three branches all the instances having the sunny will come to the leftmost branch all the instances which are having the value overcast will come to the middle branch all the instances which are having rainy will come to the rightmost branch so when i and this is my parent node at the starting all the instances are residing at the parent node okay so i have to calculate the gini index for the parent node so for that you have to apply this formula can you do that first then we will go for this simply apply the formula r is representing what the different classes how many classes are there if you are not able to do you can at least answer so that you get to the solution okay so you have to simply apply this formula to this given data set 1 minus summation where i is going from 0 to c minus 1 and the probability pit square what is pit frequency of class i i represents what class at a node t now currently what all these instances are they are present in the parent node what is the probability of class no and what is the probability of class yes at the parent node I don't want to take names. Simply answer the questions. How many instances are belonging to class no, and how many instances are belonging to class yes? Ma'am, five belongs to no, and yes, nine and belongs to yes. Yes. So if I put these simply the values over here, what I will get? One minus. Five by fourteen square. Yes. Minus nine by fourteen square. Yes. So one minus five by fourteen square minus nine by fourteen square. Is it that difficult? You are not able to understand. So when you solve that, you simply get what the impurity present at the parent node. Now can you solve that and tell me what is the answer? So this problem takes time for solving. Okay. You quickly have to do. all have to pay attention when someone is answering you have to pay attention so when you are solving such problem okay all of you pay attention okay so uh, when you are solving such problem a standard thing will be given in uh, your question you have to follow that say three decimal places uh, three uh, precision to three decimal places uh, places 
you have to follow that because here the answer differs in points now if you are getting different by points also you will not get mark see if you don't solve it is it that much difficult to solve this 1 minus 5 by 14 whole square minus 9 by 14 whole square I will simply declare that the, it is uh, done. I I have already told you you cannot solve each and every case. One I will step I will tell you rest all you have to solve. Uh, is anyone solving? Zero point four five nine. Okay, zero point four five nine. So, is everyone getting it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So that is simply the impurity present at the parent node. Now my aim is to go on reducing this impurity. So, so this is a class. Okay. This play attribute is a class. So this cannot be used for splitting the data. So at a parent node, I have a choice. I can use Outlook for splitting. I can use Temperature for splitting, or I can use Humidity for splitting, or I can use Windy for splitting. So the class attribute is not cannot be used for splitting. So at the root parent node, I have four different choices. So I have to find out what is the Gini index if I use Outlook for splitting. I have to find out the Gini index if I use Temperature for splitting. I have to find out the Gini index if I use Humidity for splitting and if I use Windy for splitting. And out of the four attribute, what we saw over here, we saw here we have choice between A and B. A can be used or B can be used. So likewise, I have four different attributes. So I will have to carry out the same task four different times, and then from that four different attribute, I will select the one which is best. Okay. So you can imagine. So how quick you have to be to solve such problem. Okay. Now I will first carry out the procedure. For finding out Gini, if Outlook is used for splitting, in order to find out the Gini index for Outlook, I have to find out. So, if I am using Outlook, I have three different values. So, I will get three childs. So, for each child, I have to find out the Gini index, and then I have this formula I have to apply. Correct. So this have to be done four times. Once using Outlook, once for temperature, once for humidity, and once for windy. So how? And that too for it only fourteen instances are there. But the real life data set is too big. Okay, so you got the impurity at the parent node. Now get the impurity at the child node. If Outlook is used for splitting, and let me know the answer. so the way you found out the the way you found out the uh, impurity of this data set how you will get this so how i can get the gini index if outlook is equal to sunny so so when i say i have now i have taken this okay this is the 14 instances these are the same 14 instances which for you to make it easy for calculation i have split them all the five instances which are having the value sunny i have clubbed together all the instances which are having the value of overcast for the outlook attribute i have clubbed together and all the attributes which are having rainy Value for the outlook, I have clubbed together. So I have to find out the to find out this value. Gini index. The outlook is sunny. You can use this. And simply, can you apply what you did this?
or you can take directly this formula so here my uh, summation is i is going from 1 to k what is k the parent node is split into k partitions here i have what three partitions one is sunny the other is uh, overcast and the other is rainy so my i will go from 1 to 3 and i by n for the say when i is 1 that is say suppose i represents sunny okay first value is what sunny so 5 so five instances are having sunny value so 5 by total at the parent r was 14 so 5 by 14 and you simply calculate the guinea index of what sunny that is the leftmost branch can you do that using this data set same partition so you just forget this huh? this actually is the next step you just forget this <clears throat> can you imagine the data at the parent node is split into three different branches because the attribute that I am testing is having three different values. So three different branches are created. The leftmost branch will have this data, the middle branch will have this data and the rightmost branch will have this data. I have not yet split it but I am just trying to test it. Okay. And find out what the impurity of this particular node is there. So, 1 minus what? The probability squ square for each class. So, if I take the leftmost branch, 3 instances are saying no, 2 instances are saying yes. So, what will be this guinea of the leftmost branch? 1 minus 3 by 5 square minus 2 by 5 square and that simply you have to put it over here. Are you understanding? <coughs> Same I have to yes, do when my eye goes to 2. When my eye goes to 2 that is overcast. That is overcast. So, Ni is what? 4 by 14. Ni by N is what? 4 by 14. And guinea index of I. I, I is representing. So, guinea index of over what? 1 minus. All are saying yes. So, 1 minus square minus 0 by 4 whole square. Because the probability of class yes is 4 by 4. That is 1 and the probability of class 0 is what? 0 by 4. And then when my I goes to 3, so 3 is what? Rainy. So the number of instances are again 5. So 5 by 14 into guinea of rainy. So, guinea of rainy is what? How many instances? 5. 3 are saying no. 2 are saying, uh, three, sorry, 3 are saying yes and 2 are saying no. So, the guinea of rainy is what? 1 minus 3 by 5 whole square minus 2 by 5 whole square. So, you have to solve this equation and then you will get the guinea of split. That is what we are looking for, the guinea of outlook. So, guinea of split is this what representing the guinea of outlook, okay. So, guinea of, if outlook is used for splitting, sorry. So, are you getting it? So, just uh, trying to reduce the space so that you can <coughs> solve it. So, what is the guinea of outlook equal to sunny? Can someone tell me? Or you can also tell me the overall value. 0 0.48 for sunny. 
जीरो पॉइंट फोर एट फॉर आउटलुक इक्वल टू सनी यस ओवरकास्ट जीरो एंड रेनी इज रेनी इज ऑल्सो जीरो पॉइंट फोर्टी एट सो वट इज द गिनी ऑफ आउटलुक जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फोर थ्री थ्री फोर ओके जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फोर थ्री इज एवरी वन गेटिंग इट सी इफ यू आर नॉट सॉल्विंग यू विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड so you already got the gini of the data set that is a parent node okay you got the gini of outlook so simply uh, subtract from parent the impurity of the child node and you will get the gain so you can calculate the gain over here okay then calculate the same procedure that you did for outlook you have to calculate do the same procedure for temperature so that you get the gain for temperature and similarly you will get the again the gain for humidity gain for humidity you have to calculate and also you have to calculate the gain for wind okay then you can choose between outlook is to be used for splitting or temperature is to be used or humidity is to be used or wind is to be used for splitting and the attribute which gives you the maximum gain okay you have to look at these four different values the one which gives you the maximum gain the one which gives you the maximum gain has to be chosen for splitting the data so if you solve so if you solve outlook gives you the maximum gain and that's why actually i had splitted this so your leftmost branch will have this data the middle branch will have this data and the rightmost branch will have this data and whatever procedure you did till now you have to go on doing to each node so this middle node won't be splitted because if you remember the hunt algorithm they say if if all the instances are belonging to the same class you can make this node as a leaf node and the label for it will be the label of all the instances since all the instances are having class label yes your label will be yes now you can see here that few instances are having yes few instances are having no no so you need to split this node and here also few instances are yes and few instances are no you have to split this node and this won't be split this is a leaf node okay so as a homework now i have to give homework okay and if you are doing it you will be get a advantage if you are not going i am not going to lose anything okay so you simply apply the same procedure that we did to this node and to this node now consider this as a parent node okay simply consider this as a parent node and carry out this procedure and consider this is a parent node and carry out this procedure and you will get the 
attribute which can be used for splitting. And if there are any doubt, we will discuss it in the next class. So you have to apply this. Okay, so this is uh, how, how you build the tree using the Gini index and using the other measure also you simply do the same thing but just a calculation, different formula changes but the overall procedure will be same. Anyone is having any doubt? Okay, if you do not have any doubts, we can, I will just uh, um, stop sharing and just end the session. Okay, someone have put something in. Okay, see if you are dropping that uh, answer in chat box, I am not having a look at it. Okay, anyways, we will stop.